d'être là pour le lever, d'être là pour le glorifier. Alléluia. C'est un don qu'il t'a donné. Ce n'est pas donné à tout le monde. Il t'a fait grâce ce matin. Alors, je mérite que nous puissions lever nos voix pendant une ou deux minutes. Juste dis-lui merci, Seigneur. Merci parce que je ne pense pas que tu peux être là et manquer quelque chose à lui dire. Nous avons tous de raison, de raison pour lui dire merci. Donc, élève ton, la voix et dis-le lui, Seigneur, merci. Merci pour, je ne sais quoi, qu'il t'a fait pour toi depuis le, le début de la semaine passée jusqu'à sa fin. Je ne sais pas ce qu'il a fait pour toi, mais toi seul, tu connais. Alors, dis-lui merci. Dis-lui, Seigneur, merci pour tout ce que tu as fait pour moi. Prions. Éternel Dieu de gloire, nous te disons merci. Seigneur, si nous sommes là aujourd'hui, ce n'est pas par nos propres forces. C'est parce que tu as renouvelé ta bonté, tu as renouvelé tes grâces, Seigneur, dans nos vies. Nous ne sommes pas plus parfaits, nous ne sommes pas plus meilleurs que ceux qui sont partis. Mais Seigneur, tu as choisi de tourner encore ton regard vers nous, Jésus. Tu as tourné ton regard vers nos familles, Seigneur. Tu as tourné ton regard, Seigneur, vers nos enfants, vers nos maris, vers nos maisons, vers nos travailleurs, Seigneur. Voilà pourquoi nous sommes là pour te dire merci. Merci pour le souffle de vie. Merci pour la force. Merci Seigneur parce que tu as pourvu Jésus. Merci Seigneur parce que tu nous as protégés Seigneur. Merci parce que tu nous as gardés. Merci parce que tu nous as guéris. Seigneur, merci parce que tu as fait tant de choses que nous-mêmes nous ne savons pas, oh Père. Car si tu nous ouvrais le ciel pour voir le combat que tu es en train de combattre pour nous jour et nuit, Père, nous ne manquerons assez de te dire merci Jésus. Voilà pourquoi nous sommes là encore, Père, pour te montrer notre gratitude, notre reconnaissance pour tout ce que tu es en train de faire pour nous. Tu es digne d'être élevé, tu es digne d'être glorifié. Toi seul, Seigneur, mérite d'être élevé au-dessus de tout, Jésus. Nous t'exaltons, nous te glorifions. Alléluia. Alléluia. Nous allons accueillir la présence de Dieu en ces lieux. Alléluia. Tu es digne, Jésus. Tu es digne, Seigneur, digne d'être élevé. Alléluia. Blessing mm. and honor. Yeah.
de Dieu qui est mort. Et il a vaincu la mort, il est sorti vivant. C'est Dieu qui priait jamais éternellement. Notre roi, notre sauveur, la main cachée, le bon berger, le lion de la tribu de Shida. Alléluia. Hey! 
Seigneur, tout ce que la place, tout le place que moi nous avons occupé, tout le moment, je te le donne, Jésus. Viens prendre la place du roi, Seigneur, et règne dans mon cœur, Yahweh. Règne dans ma vie, Jésus. Règne dans ma vie, Seigneur. Il n'y a pas de place pour deux rois. Voilà pourquoi nous te demandons la place qui te faut, la place qui te tu mérites, Jésus. Viens prendre la place du roi. Établis ton trône de gloire. Règne dans nos vies. Dirige contre Jésus. Alléluia. Alléluia. Nous élevons son nom du
notre Dieu qui aime l'humanité tout entière, tu nous as envoyé ton Fils Jésus-Christ mourir à la croix pour nous. Aujourd'hui, nous avons la vie grâce à ton sacrifice, ses frères. Te disons merci, Seigneur. Nous voulons passer, Seigneur, tout de suite à ce que tu nous avais recommandé. Et chaque fois, nous devons faire ceci en moi. Nous devons passer à la Sainte Seine maintenant. Nous allons lire un texte dans Luc 22. Luc 22 à partir du 14e verset jusqu'au 21e verset. Luc 22, 14 à 21. Quand l'heure fut venue, il s'est mis à table avec les douze apôtres. Il leur dit, « J'ai vivement désiré manger cette pâte avec vous avant de souffrir. Car je vous l'ai dit, je ne la mangerai plus jusqu'à ce qu'elle soit accomplie dans le royaume de Dieu. Puis il prit une coupe. Remercie à Dieu et dit, prenez cette coupe et partagez-la entre vous. Car je vous l'ai dit, désormais, je ne boirai plus de fruits de la vigne jusqu'à ce que le royaume de Dieu soit venu. Ensuite, il prit du pain. Et après l'avoir remercié Dieu, il les rompit et leur donna en disant, « Ceci est mon corps qui est donné pour vous. Faites ceci en souvenir de moi. » Après les souper, il prit de même la coupe et la leur donna en disant, « Cette coupe est la nouvelle alliance en mon sang qui est versée pour vous. » C'est Jésus, quelques heures avant qu'on vienne le prendre, il dit « J'ai désiré vivement ». C'est Jésus qui parle. Ça nous pousse aussi à ce que nous puissions désirer vivement. Est-ce que nous désirons ce temps Est-ce que nous aimons le temps de la Sainte Seine dans notre vie où ça devient de la routine. Est-ce que nous, nous désirons vraiment ce moment Jésus avait désiré de tout son cœur ce temps. Et il a dit, je l'institue pour que vous puissiez désormais vous rappeler de moi. Quand nous commémorons, quand nous célébrons ça, quand nous partageons le pain et le vin, nous nous rappelons de la mort de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Il n'est pas seulement mort, mais il est ressuscité. Que chacun de nous se souvienne de cet amour que Dieu a donné pour nous. Il a été avec ses disciples jusqu'avant sa mort. Tous l'ont abandonné. Est-ce que nous aussi nous allons l'abandonner? Il nous aime de tout son, de tout son cœur. Cette lecture d'aujourd'hui doit nous rappeler dès en avant que nous devons souhaiter ces moments que nous faisons une fois par semaine le premier dimanche du mois. Mais Jésus a dit, chaque fois que vous allez faire cela, il n'avait pas déterminé que ça va se faire seulement une fois. Le premier jour de la semaine, nous ne les nous lisons nulle part. Mais il dit, chaque fois, si nous en avons l'occasion, nous devons célébrer la mort et la résurrection du Seigneur. Il est mort pour toi, il est mort pour moi. Il a prié nos péchés. Il nous a aimés. Nous aussi aimons-nous les uns les autres. Pardonnons-nous réciproquement.
comme Dieu nous a pardonné en Christ. Et la table est là. Il a dit, vous allez prendre et vous allez vous souvenir de moi. Vous allez souffrir dans votre corps. Jésus n'a pas connu de moments de joie seulement. Son corps a souffert. Il a été rejeté. Nous aussi, si nous sommes rejetés, n'abandonnons pas le Seigneur. Je suis au sacrifice suprême. Même s'il faut donner notre vie. Donnons notre vie pour le Seigneur. Nous allons sauver la vie pour l'amener où Parce que fin de fin, nous allons mourir. Nous allons sauver notre vie jusqu'à quand Voilà pourquoi l'exemple de l'Église qui est persécutée doit nous fortifier. Seigneur, nous purifions ce pain, nous purifions ce vin. Nous voudrions, Seigneur, faire ce que tu nous as recommandé, de partager ce pain. Et en le faisant, nous annonçons ta mort jusqu'à ce que tu viennes. Que tu es mort pour nous. Tu as accepté de nous mourir pour nous donner la vie. Quelle grâce Jésus nous a donné. Merci de purifier cette coupe, ce pain. Nous allons le prendre, que ça nous donne la force de, de suivre l'exemple de l'Église qui est persécutée dans la fenêtre du 40, Seigneur, nous ne voulons pas lâcher que le Saint-Esprit nous fortifie et que nous puissions partager l'amour jusqu'à ce que tu reviennes. Tout est purifié au nom de Jésus-Christ. Amen. Maintenant, nous allons, on va partager.
good to be together in the presence of God. And uh, in the presence of God, we believe that there is the fullness of all good things. Amen. This morning again, the Lord is here. The glory of God is here. Hallelujah. The salvation of God is here. Amen. The favor, the mercy of God are also here. Hallelujah. With the name, or with our name on it. Amen. There's a grace of healing this morning here with the name of somebody. Hallelujah. There's a mercy of restoration this morning here to somebody's name on it. Amen. There's a breakthrough this morning here. If somebody name on it, hallelujah. <laughs> There's a good thing this morning here. If somebody name on it, hallelujah. There is a joy here this morning. If somebody name on it, amen. There is a peace of God this morning here. If somebody name on it, can I hear amen? Thank you. God bless you. It shall be done as we believe it. Amen. Amen. This is a good time. Our Father is going to talk to us again this morning through the message. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence, for open our heart to receive your word. Word of salvation is what we need. And all we know is by your grace. As we hear this morning, Father, may your spirit fill up this place. And may the Holy Spirit take full control of our mind, our heart, Lord, so we can receive your word accept your word and live in your word, Father. It's for all for our good. We thank you, Father. We praise your glorious name. Have your way this morning. We praise your name, Father, on the beginning and we thank you at the end for this wonderful time. May all the honor be to you May all the glory be to you. It's the precious name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. We pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bible, let's open look. The book of Luke. The gospel according to Luke. I love this passage. It's going to be in Luke 19. And the Lord has put on my heart again that he have a, a message through this passage again because I love it. Amen. Amen. When you love something, <laughs> you will have it. Hallelujah. You can be served the same food every day, but they will have the same food will have different tastes. Amen. Yes. Our mom, they know how to do it. If they know Papa like this kind of food, they don't want to do it the same all the time. They try to manage this time to time and make some change so you can have different tastes. Amen. That's the word of God. The same passage will give a different revelation. Amen. So Luke 19 is going to be a bot. The 
uh, Zacchaeus. Today, I take it like it's me. Amen. It's like uh, Zacchaeus here can be me this morning. And uh, I pray that it can be same for you too. Hey, hallelujah. In, uh, we're, gonna need, we're going to read from uh, verse nine, verse, the first verse to verse 10. Luke 19. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press because he was a little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. Amen. Jesus is passing this way this morning. Hallelujah. And when he passed your way, he passed with good things. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyful. Everybody say joyful. Joyful. Joyfully. Joyful. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he has gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my good I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him for fault. Verse 9, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that, war, that which was lost. We bless the name and we bless the word of God. Amen. Amen. Can we put our hand together? God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm very happy and I'm glad when I read the verse 9. Amen. Amen. When Jesus said unto him, this day is a salvation come to thy house. Hmm. I love it. And I pray that is my house. I pray that it's your house also. Amen. We see what happened here. The Bible said Jesus entered a city. He entered Jericho. He entered your continent. He entered your country. He came to your city. And he come to your neighborhood. But today, he come to us. Here, in this place. And for our beloved who join us, follow this service. It's passing our way this morning. Hallelujah. He's passing right now. And I don't want to miss what Jesus is passing with. I want to take it. Amen. He said, there's a man who named Zacchaeus, verse 2, 
who was uh, a chief, a mom publican. Some version will tell you he's a chief collector. And he was rich. He's on charge of overseeing those who collect tax for the city. So we know it's not uh, anybody. He's a boss of, with power, with authority. And he exerts his authority and his power in the area that no one can escape. You cannot be walking and getting a check without paying your tax. You cannot go to the grocery store and then buy something without paying tax. It's always there. You can't escape it. Hallelujah. So he's working, he's, he's on the char in charge of a, a, a department or a cabinet that no one can escape. He has the power and authority over everything. He's a, a big man. Nigeria people call Oga. He was Oga. Amen. In Togo, we call it Amegan. Hallelujah. Amen. In our man language, Kabia, we say Yorosuso. Amen. <laughs> oh, he has the power. And the Bible say, he hear about Jesus coming his way, coming to the city. And uh, he said, I've been hearing about him, but today, I want to see him. I hear about the miracle is performing. I hear about the teaching. I hear that when he got a crowd, multitude of people come around him to listen to him. And during that, miracle, sign, and wonder happened. Today, I want to see who he is. But the crowd was so big, tall people, strong people. Because, of course, it may not be the same one who was looking to see Jesus' daddy. It was a lot of people. But his stature, his height, it was so short that he can't be, make a room to see him. He had the will. He had the desire. But to that will and that desire, he faced opposition. Sometimes when we have a will, desire, we will face opposition. But this man, the word say. He just saw a tree. He said, what can I do? I can jump on this tree and be on the top. That will help me from the top to oversee and see Jesus. He faced opposition. He faced that he cannot ask anybody to make a room for me. His money cannot do that anymore. His authority is not going to do that anymore. His power have no, cannot work anymore. But he had a will. And what he did, he just humbled himself. And he went and climbed in the tree. He did not question himself. Oh, they're going to say, the big master, the boss climbed in the tree. He doesn't care because he just want to see the Lord. He said, I will claim it. 
I don't care what people are going to say about me. That's how things come to us. Our mind, our desire, where you have it. And we, and we have a sincere heart, sincere desire. You will bring humility on the scale. Your humility will take over. Unless you humble yourself, you cannot break through opposition. Unless you humble yourself, you cannot break through pain. Because they may come to you anytime, everywhere, from where you don't even know, unexpected. Unless you humble yourself, you can make it through. And he jumped on the tree, waiting for the master to pass. Everybody was waiting. And suddenly, the Bible said Jesus was coming. And he looked up. He saw him. He said, hey, Zacchaeus. And what amazed me, you know, he doesn't know Jesus. Yeah, because the Bible does record that he want to see who he was. He mean, he doesn't see him before. Amen. Amen. But when the Lord was passing there, he called his name. Hmm. Even though you don't know Jesus, Jesus know you. You just have the will, but he knows your name. In the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter of Jeremiah, you know, God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, before you were formed in the womb of your mom, I know you. I ordain you. I establish you as my prophet. God know you. He know your name. I even know where you are. Hallelujah. This morning, he's going to come to you where you are. And on the beginning, I say, blessing is here this morning if somebody name on it. And that day Jesus was passing. He was passing with a salvation. With a Zacchaeus name on it. I don't know what you are, what is your mind designing, but Jesus has an answer for you this morning with your name on it. But you may face opposition, you will face resistance. And when Jesus saw him, what he said, he called him. Hallelujah. It's in verse 5. And so when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make us and come down, for today I must abide in that house. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, come down. We need to come down sometime. If you want something, don't stay on your position. You have to come down. We know it sometimes when you get into some relation. Amen for a married couple when we started. Amen. When you going to visit your desire, approaching your future spouse, husband and wife, when we start a relation and dating, we know everybody calm down. Amen. You, 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 you let go your pride. Amen. You let go your pride and you expose yourself. Sometimes we need to calm down. And he calmed down. No question. And what he did on verse 6, the Bible says he made her and he received Jesus joyfully. Hallelujah. Joyfully. When Jesus called, called him, I want to come to your house today. Obviously, Zacchaeus is a sinner. Amen. He's a sinner. In verse 7, when we read it before, we see in the verse 7, because when Jesus came to his house, People around say, 
why Jesus is going and dining in someone in a sinner house? Of course, he was a sinner. Because, you know, the job he was performing that time is a corruptive job. He been oppressing people. He been taking money from people. He been taking more than what he's supposed to take. He been misusing people. If you have to take like one dollar, he can take like a two, three dollar. So he doesn't. He, he was not popular. People know him, but he doesn't have a good popularity. He was like you and me here, overcharging people in our business. Yes, I do business. Instead of charging in two dollar, I charge you five dollar. He was among people like that. He was that employer who have employed, who take the company money. People work hard for him. He underpaid them, but he can take the money and go gamble. He can go to casino with the company money. Why? Because he's the boy. He's the owner, right? He can take people money, company money, and go play lottery. He can go to club. He can live, you know, decently when people who work for him are underpaid. When people ask for a raise, he doesn't want to raise them. But it was, it was also like you. When you go to work, you don't give the value to the time you are at work. You misuse the company time. That means you are not honest. You are not trustworthy. You get paid for what you don't do. And you, employer, you don't pay people for what they do. It was not honesty. And Zachary was come like that, those kind of people. He'd been taking people money. And he was not only the chief, only the collector, but he was the chief. That means he was in the office, he stayed in the office. So when the, the other employee they go to the field and they collect money, they come, he can take some and put it in his pocket. He was, he's been bribing, so he was not a good person. He was a sinner. He can take money, he was taking money, and, uh, you know, going and having a uh, girlfriend and play with any kind of woman and live anyhow or drink. And he doesn't care about anybody. That's what kind of person he was. Not good person. Hallelujah. You see that this is a chaos. It can be you, brother. It can be your sister, too. Maybe it's you, brother. It's you, sister, in this room. Or joining this service online. Look. He was that kind of person. So his life wasn't decent life. It was not a good life. Amen. But when Christ called him, he said, calm down. Today I'm coming to your house. If it was me at that time, I'll say, uh-uh, you cannot come to my house. I'm not a good person. Right? Yes, because in uh, Matthew, book of Matthew 8, we know about the centurion who went to Jesus asking him to heal his servant. Right? We all know it's Matthew 8. When a centurion son servant was sick and you went to Jesus, begging him to come and heal his servant. When Jesus said, let's go to the house, he said, I'm not worthy. You cannot come under my roof because I'm a sinner. My life is not good. You cannot come into my house. Hallelujah. It means, obviously, 
His life is not, Jesus cannot come to his house. But, but Zacchaeus here, he did not care about that. You know, when Christ wants you, when he wants to come to you, he doesn't care how things are around you. Zacchaeus doesn't say, no, don't come. He say, come on, I go. All this was in his mind. The desire. And when they went to the house, the Bible say he received him joyfully. Hallelujah. Why he received him joyfully? Because he took time. First thing, he has a faith to, ask, to, allow, to, to say, okay, come to my house. But when Jesus went to his house, the joy came after he listened to him. Jesus went to the house. He teached the house. He listened to Jesus. And then joy starts flowing in his heart. He starts seeing that, wow, there's a lot of things I did not know before. Man, this man is giving me joy. My money, my power, my authority, all that I have, all that I can do, or I can make people do, they never give me this joy before. But see a man that just spoke to me, and all my heart is full of joy. Hallelujah. But first of all, what he did, the Bible said, he ran. He was curious to see what Jesus is coming to do in his house. Because his curiosity make him to be open, available to hear about, to hear a Jesus. But we don't have that kind of curiosity today. It's what is lacking us. He rushed to home. Who can make Zacchaeus run before? Who? He's the one who made people run. But when he met the Lord, the Lord make him run to home. He doesn't have time to, to, to clean anything in the house. Jesus doesn't need that. You know, in a Luke 10, verse from verse 38 down, Luke 10, verse 8 down, we hear a story about uh, Martha and Mary. Hallelujah. When Jesus went to the house and both were in the business, Martha was running everywhere, preparing and cooking and doing everything. When Mary was at the feet of the Lord, while doing, listening to the teacher. Hallelujah. It's what Zacchaeus did. He didn't care to prepare anything in the house. Like Martha was there preparing and was, was ready to go and tell, oh Lord, now the food is ready. Please, can you make us honor to come to the dining room? You know, we clean everything so we can come and eat. No. Jesus said, that's not what I need. So that's why when she went and complained to Jesus, Jesus said, no, you worry for, you know, you, you trouble yourself. You trouble yourself for uh, an useless thing. Your sister here, she made the right choice. She chose a good path which has never been taken away from her, is what is to listen to me. Is to hear what I'm saying. She's curious to see what I'm saying. That curiosity that is lacking us. We don't run to church because we're not curious to see what's gonna, what God's going to do today at church. We don't run to the meeting because we are not, we are not curious to hear the Bible, the Bible study. We can run everywhere, run to our business, run to work, run to do everything. 
We can rush doing everything, running behind money. Yes, because all is about money. We rush for that. You can even speed up and be pulled up by police and get a ticket. But people don't get my ticket on Sunday because Sunday is church day. No, nobody is paid up to go to church. Police, they make money more on weekday where people, everybody run to church. And they make money Friday night, Saturday morning because people went to club, they dance, they get drunk. And they speed up. They drive anyhow. They get ticket. Hospital, receive more patients on Friday evening, Saturday morning, because why people went to club, they drink, and they get involved in accidents. But on Sunday, everything is quiet. No more rush. Peacefully. It doesn't mean you have to rush. No, it doesn't mean you have to speed up. It doesn't mean you have to speed up to have ticket. But we don't have that house inside of us. Yes, if you are, we are late for church, nobody draws speed up when he's late to church. When the service has to start at 10 o'clock and you leave leaving home at 10 o'clock, you know you have 30 minutes, right? Nobody rush. Hallelujah. Because I'm, not, because I'm not going to be right up at church. My manager is not there. I'm not going to have a point. I can be church whenever I want. They can start worship. When I get there, I'll catch worship. I'll catch praise. I'll dance. That's all I need. Because that's not, that's not the desire. That's not a desire in our heart. There's no curiosity. The gentleman here, Zacchaeus, he rushed to church. He was e he walked to, to home. He was eager to listen to him. And after he listened to everything, he said, man, man, I have to surrender everything. I have to give things away. Things I've been doing, things I've been enjoying, it's just vanity. After he listened to the word of God, he can see himself like going through a lab, going through MRI. He can see himself naked. After he hear the word of God, he discover who he was. He said, yeah, I'm a sinner. Look what I was doing with people. And he made a vow. He said, for those who have taken wrongly the money, I will give it back to them. Hallelujah. I even restored to them four times. And I will give to the poor. Hmm. Restitution. I want uh, somebody to read verse uh, Pabula. Read me Deuteronomy. 24. Let's open Deuteronomy 24. Verse 14 and 14 and 15. Deuteronomy 24. Verse 14 and 15. Hallelujah. Never take advantage on, on the poor, right? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Sometimes people have been treated based on their nationality. Hallelujah. You go to some job place, this is what happened. They treat people based on their nationality. Amen. It's one of the things that Zacchaeus was doing too. Verse 15. Mm. 
you must pay your workers. And fairly, you shouldn't be treating them based on their sex, religion. Ah, yes, like I'm a Christian and my workers, I can pay good raise to Christian and those who are pagan, I can pay them less because it's a Christian, I'm a Christian. Uh-uh. You got to be, everybody got to be treated equally. Honesty in everything you do. And you got to pay your workers. Because if you don't pay them, they will cry to God. Let me give you a secret. If you walk somewhere and you know that you are not paid fairly, cry to God. And the Bible says, and if they cry to God, God the listener will hear their cry. And then God will continue for the, you who are supposed to pay as a sin. Zacchaeus understood that after Jesus prayed to him. He said, I don't want that to be counted as a sin for me. I will render to them what I have taken wrongly. Amen. Cry if you are not treated fairly at work. But, first of all, you have to give the value to your job. You know, in fact, men cannot pay you what you deserve. But God can force their hand to pay you what you have to be paid for. Amen. And he said, I'll give it back to them. But for you, for you, who cannot pay back somebody, or you cannot go and fix it. Yes, because after you listen to Christ, to the law, he said, I got to fix things. Yes. I made a mess. I got to fix the mess. Because when the word of God comes inside of you and penetrates you, he only has the will to see Christ. But Christ has another agenda for him. From the will, Christ just go and just now take over his heart. The word penetrates his heart and start bearing fruit. Don't look things around you. Christ doesn't need things around you. What you need is your mind first. If you have the desire, the will, then he will come. And when he comes, then he will perform his story. Christ is not going to come to you and take your heart. Right the only thing he wants from you is your heart. Accept him. Come to me. I repent. So when he come now, then he's going to do the job. And he start doing the job right away. Instantaneously, Christ start doing the job. Freeing him. And if you are free, you can fix what you have made. He all people, he give it back to them. Everybody going to cry. Did you hear what's going on with, with Zacchaeus? He's giving back the overpay. Go get yours. You go get, it's like uh, you are home and we got a check from IRS. IRS say, no, no, you file for tax. And uh, they send you money. And after six months, two, three years, five years, another check comes to your mail. You look at the word, say, IRS say, no, we are reimbursing you. We overcharged you before. What a happiness. Take $10,000. Amen. We've overcharging you. You've been paying now for five years or three years. We owe you, you owe you. $10,000. I'm telling you. You'll be jumping and hopping. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're a father, you'll be the best father in the house, daddy. Amen. Amen. If you're a husband, you'll be the best husband in the house, daddy. Amen. If you're a wife, you'll be the best wife in that because you're going to go in and kiss and embrace and jump on your husband and wife because you are happy. Just take over and flow. It's what start happening. And people are going to say, why has he been doing that? He said, no. Because Jesus went to his house. And then he listened to the word and he changed. The sinner, Jesus went to his house and we were all murmuring, blaming Christ that he went to the sinner house. 
Not only he received Christ, but he's giving back to us our money. Wow. That's an awesome. That's fantastic. That's how he was delivered. And somebody need that as, as well. But if you cannot pay it, because you cannot fix some mess, this one he fixed it. Hallelujah. But he can't fix everything. You can't fix everything. Amen. The abortion have been committed years ago. Can you fix it? The child you kill in an abortion, can you give back life to the child? The lie, you say, can you both go back and get and fix it? Some mess, we can't fix it. Some debt remain unpaid. You can't pay it. Even if you have the desire, you can't pay it. But there's a way it can be paid. That's why he here, after he said everything, he said, I'll go back and fix I owe people, I go back and I, I, I give back to them. Jesus said, well, that's what you can do. We can fix some mess, but we cannot fix all. And Jesus said, thank you. In verse 9. In verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. Amen. Your unpaid debt can also be paid only through salvation. Salvation will make all your debt completely paid. You can fix everything, but somebody can fix everything for you. Reason why you don't have to look behind too much and see what is the what you have to do because. Zacchaeus did not say, let me go arrange the house before the holy of the holy come to the house. Because, you know, I can't do everything. He, he understood that. You can't fix everything. You can't make everything good around you. You can't. But Christ is the only one who can do it for you. Because he designed to do that. He showed that is all truly converted. He repents, but he shows you was truly converted. True conversion. Today, Zacharias gave money back to people. He paid back poor. Those he owed, he paid them. Those he supposed to pay, to, to pay, he did not pay, he paid them. You owe somebody, he had to pay. If you don't owe money, maybe you owe somebody love. Your husband, you owe love to your wife. Wife, you did not give the full love you promised your husband on the beginning. You did not give him the full love. You give him 50%. And you say the other 50%, you are not going to give it back. To, you are not to give him. Today, we have to give it back to him. The submission is not thorough. You have to give back the submission you've been holding. The love to your wife, you have to give back the remaining, the one you've been keeping. There's a balance. She has a balance with you. You have to give back the balance to her. It's what you owe. It's why he was taken wrongly. Zacchaeus, in the beginning, is not his start uh, he, when he take people money. He was a good tax collector in the beginning, but, but over the time, he started being corrupted, he started being broadened. That's what you, 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 you promise in your marriage in the beginning, that I will love you forever. You'll be my spouse forever. You'll be my wife forever. You'll be my husband forever. Only death will separate us. Now things come in, pain come in, opposition come in, resistance come in, and then everything is uh, dropping. You have to give it back. 
Christ is telling this morning, you have to render the submission. You have to render the love. You've been loving your children. Everybody loves children when they are little because they are so pleasant when they are little. They like to, you know, run around by when they start getting older. And they listen. But when they start getting old, we lack love to our children. Children lack obedience to parents. Children, you need to give full obedience to your parents. Parents, you have to give full love to children. For some, you promise... You make a vow. I'll marry you. You're starting dating. Getting even into all the arrangement between family to be married. You know why we, we face some time? Some time we just found that one start being unfaithful. Cheating. You are cheering on fear on your fiance. You are cheering. And you are even about to replace her. And you are even about to replace him. You say, I will marry you. But now I found someone beauty, very beauty than you or handsome than you, I can replace you. You break a covenant. You break somebody's heart without any good excuse. You promise somebody I will marry you and you travel, you go far and you find somebody else there and you break, you leave somebody in a pain. You lie. You are not trustworthy. You are dishonest. You have to fix it. You have to fix it. Now for us who have given, if you have given your life to Christ Jesus, if Zacchaeus found that he had to render, he found that he was a sinner, he found that he was doing wrong, that is calling us, Christian, children of God, that you shouldn't be doing what Zacchaeus was doing. We are called not to do it. Because if he say, I render, I give back, it's because I don't want to do it. He discovered that it's wrong. Wrong is wrong. Amen. Wrong is wrong. Do we know that those things we'll be doing and living in wrong is wrong? So if it's wrong, what continuing to do it? Zachary said, if I was a sinner, what continue to take people money? What continue to be a bad person in the city? Why? If I accept Christ in my life. So why should, I, should we be continuing to do it? Why should we continue to cheat? How should we continue to, 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 to not Obey. How we continue to not be trustworthy, to be dishonest, to be lying, to be stealing. Why? Why do we have to continue to live how we, how we live? Somebody should change mind today. Somebody must give his life totally to Christ today. And Jesus said, Today salvation has come into thy house. For as much, he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are we, we, we are in, but we are not in. We are in, but we never receive Christ in our life. We never open our heart to Christ. Christ still in our mind till now. 
but we never give him access to enter our heart. Why? Because we, consider, we are considering too much things around us. Our attention is around things, is on things around us too much. Our attention is more in our feeling. Our feeling take too much over. And Christ has no more place in our life. He doesn't invade our heart anymore. The Bible says our body is the temple of God. If Christ say I enter today's salvation and enter your house, it means it's the house, you, your body, your heart. And I come not for those who are good, but I come for those who are lost. Unless you find yourself lost. Unless you find yourself sinner. Unless you know that you are messing. Unless you know that you are doing wrong. Unless you know that mm, I'm not there yet. Christ can come into your heart. So this morning, if you are in the room, this room, or we join the service online, Christ doesn't link this around you. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need how your house looks. He doesn't need your generosity. He doesn't need your heart. But first, open him your mind so he can come. He say, I'm at the door. I'm knocking. If anyone hear my voice, he open. I come in and I turn with him. He's knocking at the door. If you accept him, he'll come. And when he comes, He'll perform the work of salvation. He'll clean out all the mess. He'll clean out everything that has been deposited in your life. But remember, I know we always sing sound saying, in French, Jésus viendra, il te prendra. Si tu es prêt, il te prendra. Hallelujah. We'll never be ready. On ne sera jamais prêt. Il y aura toujours un vide. À moins que tu laisses Jésus combler ce vide, c'est en ce moment qu'il viendra te prendre. He will take you where you make a room for him so he can come and take you. Of course, he's going to take us. But we will never be we are never going to be ready. If we think he will be ready and we are holding to come and repent, you're never going to be repent. He want to take you where you are, as you are. He just wants to come back to him. Hallelujah. Just come back to him and confess and let him enter your heart and live inside of you. And he will perform the work of true, true and full salvation. Hallelujah. But you have to make your part. You have to give away some stuff. You have to surrender everything for Christ only. Hallelujah. I will humbly ask Bishop to pray for, pray for us this morning. And if you join this service online, and you know that you, need, you are like Zacchaeus, you need to render, you need things to fix, you need to, to be arranged in your life, or oh, you never have this, the, the, the experience of salvation that regret your past, regret what you are doing, and you want Christ to take full control of your life. Maybe you are Christian in the church, but you never been with Christ. Christ never dwelt in your life. It's not late. He can catch you everywhere you are. Leave your agenda on the side. He can catch you. Saul was going to Damascus. For his own agenda. God catch him and change the next chapter of his life. Hallelujah. The woman at the well, she was going to get water. God catch her and give her, change the next chapter of her life. Hallelujah. Zachary went to the tree just to see Jesus. Jesus catch him and change the next chapter of his life. He can change it for you too. But he want to take you wherever you are. Don't give it, don't postpone it for tomorrow. It's today. He can do it for today. Because it's today that is passing in your way. Hallelujah. And he come to you. He'll free you completely. 
He'll make you stronger, knowledgeable. He'll make you more wise than before. Amen. So he can perform the duty inside of you. May God bless us.
Get ready for our offering. Nous pouvons préparer nos offrandes. If your offering is ready, then we can stand up and go for the Lord.
that you deserve to pay for the offense. Père Céleste, reçois favorablement les offrandes qui sont venues de tes enfants. Et en retour, Seigneur, que la bénédiction au centuple accompagne tout un chacun. Au nom de Jésus-Christ, soyez bénis de l'un ou de près. Au nom de Jésus, nous avons ainsi prié. Amen. Amen. Oh, les enfants. Any birthday? Is there any birthday? Sunday of Thanksgiving because uh, on Thanksgiving we're not going to be here because of what you know so Thanksgiving we stay home Alleluia Alleluia Amen Thanksgiving we stay home uh, I think uh, December the 26th we're going to have our Christmas celebration and end of the year celebration Amen. Amen. Not those days we receive for the 21st for Thanksgiving and the 26th for Christmas and end of the year. Thanksgiving for end of the year. So those two days we're gonna be going to have special service. Hallelujah. Amen. So keep it man. And uh, as you know, Tuesday and, uh, and Thursday we have uh, our service, weekday service. So please join if you are available and uh, the Lord will uh, uh, be with you and uh, be great thing in your life as well. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's try to, as we heard, the same way we rush to go to work. Uh, it is good. And let's also rush to come to church. It's not, uh, but it's just, uh, uh, we honor, want to honor God, want to let him know that uh, we take that, that thing seriously. Hallelujah. Just that. And if we are serious with God, now we don't want to do like, we go work, we are there every day, we never miss work. We never miss work, and when we come to church, okay, to, uh, today I'm not going. And when I come, uh, I go the other Sunday, uh, I'm uh, relaxed, I don't worry, I don't hurry. It's like, okay, it's more important. So let's change uh, the, the pattern and uh, give honor to God the way that we show up to church. Amen. Amen. 